Okay, now we'll see the next topic, which is accounts payable invoice posting with input tax. Input tax meaning purchases tax. All the while, we've been posting invoices without any taxes. I'm going to show you how to post invoice with taxes. Let's go to normal invoice accounting, financial accounting, accounts payable, document entry, and invoice. Choose the vendor. This one, and the invoice date, the amount, okay, then all the tax codes are available here, tax codes meaning predefined tax codes by the consultants. These tax codes will determine two things. The first thing is the tax rate, and the second one is the tax GL account to which the computed tax amount should be posted to. Okay, let me just show you using a slide the purpose of tax code. You see this? Tax code stores two things. First is tax rate, and the second one is tax GL account. I'll show you where the tax code stores the tax GL account and the tax rate accordingly. Let's choose a tax code first. Fixed task tax code U1, okay? And I'm going to click this calculate tax, and I'm going to enter the line items, which is cost of sales. Okay, let's choose a cost of sales account, which is this, 60000, and put in the 100. I'm going to simulate now, but there's a problem, because this GL account is not configured to receive any tax postings yet. So you cannot assign the tax code you want to the GL account because something needs to be configured on this GL account to receive the tax codes. You can notice here this tax code is copied to the line item tax code field over here. We'll change this to something else. Second tax code will be copied here too, okay? This is the line item tax code. This means whatever you said down here will be copied down here. But for each line item, we can use a different tax code also, and we can choose from this list. All right? But now we have a problem. This GL account is not going to receive this tax code. Let's simulate now. See? The account is not tax relevant. Tax code will be ignored. I proceed further by hitting the Enter key. I get 100 and 100, but the tax line is not calculated. So I go to the Tax button here. There is no taxes computed yet, and if I go back, you notice that the tax code has been removed in both places because this GL account has not been configured for tax codes yet. So in order to configure that GL account for tax codes, you have to go to FS00, put in the GL account and press Enter, and go to Change Mode, and go to Control Data, come to this field here, Tax Category. This is the field which allows or disallows any tax postings to the GL account. Let's see the options we have. We have only input taxes allowed, only output taxes allowed, all tax types allowed. These are the three main tax categories that we normally use. Let me just explain what this is. If I select this minus indicator, then it means this GL account can now receive any purchase taxes, which is input taxes. If I choose the plus sign instead, it will allow only the output taxes, which is sales tax. If I want to allow both input and output, I have to choose this asterisk, which means all tax types will be allowed. But in this case, I want to restrict it to only input tax, so I just choose a minus sign and then save it. Okay, let's see what the difference is now. 
when we go back to the invoice posting screen. I see that once again I need to enter the tax code again. Okay, you can enter the tax code here once again. Right? Now you can simulate. Let's see whether this time throws any error message or not. Okay, now it doesn't throw any error message. It's asking for a tax jurisdiction key. What is this tax jurisdiction key? Since some companies are incorporated in the U.S., in the U.S., different tax codes are applicable for different states within the United States. So, for example, Missouri might have 5%, Alabama might have 20%, and so on. So we need to find a way to specify different tax rates according to different states. These are tax jurisdiction codes that we use to specify different tax rates according to different states. Let's see what options are available here. It's asking for a state. I'm going to enter Missouri, press enter. So within Missouri we have two tax regions. One is Missouri and the other one is Kansas City. So this means that two different tax rates can be maintained within Missouri State alone. So I'm going to choose the Missouri State Jurisdiction Code so the respective tax rate will be applicable. Let me simulate again. All right, it all sounds good. But there is a balance of five dollars because the AP side should include the tax portion, which is 5%. This tax code has got 5% set up in the tax jurisdiction code. Let me just show you that. See this financial accounting view, financial accounting global settings view, tax on sales and purchases, and come to basic settings. Under tax on sales and purchases, we have basic settings, calculations, and posting. We go to basic setting first. Come here to define tax jurisdictions. And we enter Tax Procedure USA, which is this standard tax jurisdiction for tax USJ. I'll let you know why I entered tax USJ. Why am I not entering others? Okay, well, I'll let you know later. Just bear with me. Now go on and you can see all the tax jurisdictions set up. Alaska, Alabama, Arkansas, Missouri. Let's go down. So we have here Missouri and Kansas City. These are the two codes that we saw, all right, inside the tax jurisdiction field. All right, so go back. Let me show you why we select this tax USJ and nothing else. The reason behind that is since some companies are incorporated in the U.S., we need to see what is the tax percentage that is assigned for country U.S. To check that, you go here. All the countries are listed here. Just position to U.S. And you'll notice tax USJ has been assigned to country U.S. So this tax procedure is the one active for country U.S. What is inside the tax procedure? To check what is inside the tax procedure, tax USJ, you can come here and check, define procedures, and you can go down and see all the tax procedures applicable for different countries have been set up by SAP. So you don't have to specify anything here. You don't have to go to new entries and specify a different tax procedure because all the tax procedures available for all the countries have been predefined by SAP. You can just make use of this without changing anything. Let's set what is inside Tax USJ. Just go like this and go to Control Data. Now these are the various calculation procedures that have been set up by SAP. As a consultant, you don't have to specify anything here or change anything here. Just take it at face value. Just notice what has been defined here. This is for U.S. tax procedure. All this has been defined under Tax USJ. And the Tax USJ has been assigned to country U.S. Over here. So now as long as any company uses this country as a home country, this tax procedure will be applicable. 
Do you know where we assigned Country US to the company code? It's in the company code settings. It's in Enterprise. Sun Company has been assigned a country of US. We'll go here. It's shown here as a country US, but it's not defined here. It's defined under Enterprise Structure. Let me just show you. Enterprise Structure, Definition, Financial Accounting, Edit Company Code Data, and go for some. See, US has been assigned to Sun Company Code. So using this assignment US, the system knows that Sun Company Code is using Tax USJ because US has been given a tax procedure of USJ here and the tax USJ will use the jurisdiction code that is defined here. Tax USJ. That's the reason we enter tax USJ here and check all the tax jurisdictions applicable. All right, now that is what is being shown here your selected tax jurisdiction code. Now we've only seen how the tax jurisdiction code has been assigned to country US, but we haven't seen what are the tax rates applicable for the different tax regions or tax jurisdictions. Let's see how it's set up in the system. For that we need to go to Financial Accounting, Basic Settings. Close this, go to Calculation, Define Tax Codes. Click this, enter US again. All right, this is the tax code you've selected. Here, U1. And then here, you have to select the respective tax jurisdiction for which you want to enter a rate. If you leave it empty and press Enter, it will not allow you to proceed. Enter Tax Jurisdiction Code. So you have to assign now a tax jurisdiction code because the tax rates are defined for tax jurisdiction. And this validity date is to define a valid tax rate for a period. For example, if you want to assign a different tax rate applicable for a different period, you can just change the date here from which period the new tax rate is applicable. So I'm going to say here that my tax rate is going to be applicable from the 9th of May onwards. I'll just put 9th of May onwards and press enter. You see this here? 5% has been defined here under the VS1. This is how the system knows that 5% is the tax rate. When you go for simulation, see the 5% has been completed. We go to tax, you can see the 5% here. So it's taking from these settings here this tax rate and for this tax jurisdiction. But bear in mind if you enter a different tax jurisdiction you can specify a different tax rate. Let me just show you. I'll go for Kansas City. You won't see the 5% anymore. All right, this is Kansas City, so we can enter a different rate here. Let me come back to Missouri. So for Missouri, it's 5% and valid from the 9th of May. If I go to periods, I can see all the dates which have been defined for a period. 8th of May to 8th of May, 5% was defined. From 9th of May to until further notice, 5% is defined. 
So all the rates previously defined are shown here. So using this valid from date, we can actually enter different dates applicable for different validity periods. So now you know how the tax rate is computed. But how is the system assigning the tax rate? The computed tax amount to the GL account 900101. Where do you specify that? The tax amount should go to this tax account. It is again defined depending on the tax code. Tax rate is also depending on the tax code. Tax GL account is also determined by the tax code. Let me show you where it is. I quit this screen, go to Postings, go to Define Tax Accounts. Before that, let me just show you something. Tax Codes, US. Press Enter. You see this VS1. Take note of this account key, VS1. So this account key is the one which is used to determine the GL account. You come here to Different Tax Account. We look for VS1. VS1 is over here. So we just double click this, enter the chart of account, which is Sun, and you would enter the GL account here for the tax postings. So this is the account that is used by the system to post the tax amount which is computed. So again, we look at this chart here. Tax code is the one to determine the tax GL account. You know how it's done. Firstly, the system will come and look for the tax code that you've entered, which is U1, and the tax jurisdiction, which is Missouri, and you will come and look for the account here, which is VS1. And using the VS1, the system will come to this screen here, Tax Accounts and look for VS1 here, over here, as per the chart of accounts, sum. Because different chart of accounts can have different GL accounts. So for sum, it is being posted to this account. So if you want to change to a different account, you can change it, and accordingly here the postings will change to the new account. Alright, so you click this, you know the rate, and you know the tax base amount, which is used, and the tax GL account to which it is posted. All right. If you enter a different tax jurisdiction, a different rate will be applicable. Just take note of that. Then you can just proceed to post this in that transaction. So these postings will be generated. All right. Okay, there's one more thing I need to tell you. Just now we saw how the tax was computed by the system by itself. But for certain situations we can actually compute the tax manually and enter it manually. Let me just show you that. 100. Instead of checking this calculated tax, we just enter the tax amount, which is $6.00 and change the tax vendor amount to 106 to include the tax amount and put in the GL account and the amount here. Alright, change this to tax jurisdiction is MO, Missouri. So this one will also change to U1. So now let's see whether we can post it like this. So it says tax entered is incorrect. Amount is $6, but the correct amount should be $5, because this U1 code has got a rate of 5. So just ignore this message, because it's just an error message. Press Enter. So you can see the tax rate computed is not to say computed. The system accepts the manual tax that you have entered, the $6. We click here, and you'll notice that the 5% is still maintained because this tax code has got a rate of 5%. But it also accepts the manually entered tax amount, which is $6, which is supposed to be 6%. We can still post this transaction as it is. 
So that's how you enter a manual tax amount. If for whatever reason you don't want to accept the default tax rate, which is assigned to the tax code here, U1, just don't tick the Calculate Tax checkbox and enter the tax amount directly here. You can even increase to 7. Accordingly, increase to $7. Now simulate again. Ignore this message. Just press Enter. Now $7 is calculated, but 5% is still here. You can still post it, all right? But if you check this box here, this tax field will disappear. See, it says delete the amount. You just delete the amount and press Enter. You see, the tax field is gone. And here, too. Let the system calculate the tax rate. To watch the full video, buy our SAP training videos at www.erptraining9.com.